some straw for a comfortable ride. Looking forward to the potential for more breeding of kangaroos at Australia Zoo. But before that happens, we have to overcome another minor disaster. No, mate. I think you should stay with him, keep the door open, plenty of air circulation. Then when it starts going woo woo woo, getting really confusing time, shut the door um, and just stay with him. This one's out like a light. But the other one is almost ready to go. Hey, big boy. How are you doing, big fella? Actually, stay with him, tag him, make sure he doesn't run into people, run into fences. Yeah, that's it, mate. You're just going to have to run block. Just make sure when he comes out, you're going to have to watch out for the public more than anything. Oh, he looks good. Yeah, you'll just have to keep the people out from around him so yeah. they don't spook him with any sudden movement. He's a bit wobbly, but no problems. However, the smaller roo is distinctively dopey and definitely not ready for the real world. So we just want to let him settle in and find his way around. The little fella's looking a lot more with it and Maureen's decided to let him wander around and just keep following. Oh, hello. The big one seems as good as gold and looks totally at home. But what happens next with the smaller one could have been fatal. Anesthetising any animal is always problematic. We've got these kangaroos, these grey kangaroos, everything seems to be going smooth as a zipper, then bang, we've got to rescue one out of the creek. Even the simplest task, like having a drink of water, is a potential danger. Kangaroos can swim really well, but this bloke's still very dopey from the sedative, so Maureen's got to give him some help. She's trying to point him in the right direction and give him a gentle nudge so he can climb up the bank on his own accord. Disaster averted, and he'll be back to normal in no time. Bye. Three people to catch one bird, and Stuart's had to disguise himself as a zoo guest. Come on. There's fresh fish as bait, and the net's ready. It's time for a regular vet check, but the cormorant's on to Stuart, and he won't cooperate. Come on. One more of them, mate. Some folks don't think birds are that clever, but I'm here to tell you this guy's got Stuart's number. Not even his favorite food is enough to overcome his instinct to escape. And have a go at the sneaky little fellow. He doesn't miss a trick. It's turning into a major contest, and the birds got the upper hand. This time, the bird's taken the bait, occupied with chomping down some fresh fish, and Stuart reckons he's got him. Missed, but he's off balance enough to make a successful grab. <laughs> it didn't get him in the net, but we got him. <laughs> yeah. I, I just thought I'd better go before that herring comes in. Well done. It's enough to keep him down. Hallelujah. <laughs> we got him. You guys jump in the back, and um, I'll take Wendy in the front. This drop-dead gorgeous Sheila is Wendy, our executive producer from Animal Planet, and she's coming on a wildlife rescue. You know, this goes on 24 hours a day. There's always an animal in trouble, and we respond like the fire brigade to a fire. 27 Mount Mellon, lower Mount Mellon. This one here, Brian, isn't it? 27. It's, it's mother's still down there, she's looking distressed. Yep. Um, but the bruise jumped off a little bit, but yep. we've had them in our yard for about a year. Yep. So we've got an idea where they go. Yep. Now this next scene could be upsetting for some, so please be warned. Move away if you have to. There's some terrible injuries you're about to see. One of the ruse, a juvenile, has been horrendously injured from being hit by a car. You're all right, buddy. You're all right, you're all right. Oh, man, it's a bad break. It is, too. It's a shocker. Really good. Grab this leg. Oh man, they're both broken. 
With leg bones totally snapped and protruding through the skin, I know in my heart it's got no hope. That's got to hurt. Right, yeah, let's go up. Yep. <clears throat> Let me just... We'll take it in turns, huh? This poor little ruse in terrible pain and frightened half to death. <sighs> Critical there. Right? When people call us in, we like to explain what's going on. Steve, is it okay? No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get him to a vet as quick as we can. He's so stressed. Well, it's a vet's call. We do the rescue. The vet does the hard yard because it's been snapped and it is so exposed. There's like three or four inches of bone and it's complete, completely come out. And the other foot is broken also right over the knuckle. Straight to the truck, huh? Hey, thanks, eh? Hey? Like, yeah, thanks for coming. Good on you. you got good hearts and we sure appreciate that. No, I'm just glad you found it because I didn't want it out there. Okay. Oh, mate, that, oh, I wouldn't want that. Apparently the mother and her summer dog Joey strayed onto the road. Mum avoided the traffic, but this poor little tacker wasn't so lucky. We know the vet can't do much, so we'll just end the pain. The oldest animal in the zoo, and maybe the oldest creature on Earth, is off to a new home. It's Harriet the giant Galapagos land tortoise, and she's moving next to the American alligators. There's a privacy screen until they both get used to it, and the finishing touches are just about done. Like removing low branches so Harriet doesn't get caught up. Now this girl doesn't walk anywhere fast or often, so we have to carry her. If we just lift her up and sit her on, you pat her throat, she yeah. might even just stand there while we do the whole job. She loves this. Harriet is very affectionate. The plan is doomed to failure. Despite her proverbial slowness, she's incredibly strong and very single-minded. I guess you get that when you're in your 170s. Okay, so everyone will have to gather around. We're just going to have to carry it, get the sling. Okay. This girl's done a lot of travelling. She's been right around the world on sailing ships since being studied by naturalist Charles Darwin in 1835. Back then, she was the size of a dinner plate. Now, she's 330 pounds and still growing. A heck of a load for hand carrying through some of the narrow paths and gateways. Eventually, she arrives in a new home, none the worse for wear. But maybe just a little bit dizzy and unaccustomed at the speed. Hey, let's go. Rightio. Gentle down. Reassurance. Lots of green grass here, sweetheart. Well, that was tough, all right, but the disaster happened earlier. Even something as simple as building a giant land tourist exhibit can go awry. Crikey, we've got bogged. Mostly, our construction programs run like a well-oiled machine. But with such massive expansions happening at the zoo, there's always the odd disaster to cope with. <laughs> Stuck right down to the axle. Beauty. I just love a chance to get behind the wheel of a tractor. But crikey, even this power's not enough to budge the truck. It just keeps digging in deeper. The solution? Use the backo. A bit of lift and pull at the same time. Perfect, apart from a couple of deep holes in the lawn to fix up before Harriet is moved into a new enclosure. You know, here on the beautiful Sunshine Coast, occasionally we get sea snakes washed up on the beach which can be highly dangerous because they're very venomous. So, it's up to my team to get out there and rescue the snake as quick as possible. Little Richard's on the case, and the worst thing about this rescue is that it's double jeopardy. The sea snake could die, and so could anyone else who thinks they can touch it or pick it up. At first glance, there's no sign of life. 
But little Richard sees the faintest flicker of hope, the tiniest